Hello everyone. So this is my first video tutorial on uh, biology, and today we'll be uh, studying about the topic that is origin of life. So today's topic is origin of life. So before beginning with the topic, let me just uh, give a small recap that how the Earth is formed. So it was almost around 15 to 20 billion years ago that uh, the universe got formed and it consisted of very uh, subatomic particles with having a very high energy. The later that led to the formation of hydrogen and helium atoms and which eventually led to the formation of universe. Now after a certain period of time the universe started expanding and the materials start to condense due to the action of gravity or the force of gravity. And as a result what happens, stars began to form. Then the stars exploded to form supernovas which eventually led to the formation of earth and other chemical constituent. So this is just the small recap about the or, uh, origin or the formation of earth. And now we will study about how life came on earth. So the existence of life from where the life began. The first cell means how, how the evolution of cell has occurred in our earth. So the first theory which is promising and which is being uh, studied before any scientific investigation is the theory of special creation. So what is the first theory? The first theory is about theory of special creation theory of special creation now this theory is basically based on the mythological beliefs that in the Hindu mythology we say that the god Brahma is the creator of the universe in the Bible we see that it is the story about an Adam and Eve that on the sixth day the human beings came on this earth and the first person was Adam which was followed by the woman who came out from the twelfth rib cage of man that is Eve. So these are some mythological facts which is concerned with this theory of special creation. Now this theory is uh, we are not taking into account about uh, the scientific theories because scientific phenomena or investigation cannot prove or disprove this theory of special creation. Now after this theory, the next theory which proves the scientific experiments or some philosophers which they have given the theory, it is the theory of spontaneous generation or it is autogenesis theory. So the second theory is, the second theory is theory of Spontaneous generation. Theory of spontaneous generation, or it is also known as the autogenesis, autogenesis theory. Now, this theory tells that life has arose from non-living organic matter abiogenetically. Now what do you mean by abiogenetically? It means without abiogenetically. Abiogenetically. This means without the intervention of living things or living organisms. So based on this theory of autogenesis, there are various philosophers and scientists which have proposed their own thoughts or opinion pertaining to this theory of spontaneous generation. So first uh, science, uh, philosopher, he was a Greek philosopher, was Anaximander. Anaximander. He maintained that plants and animals has originated from inorganic substances. Who? Anaximander. Now the second scientist or the philosopher was Aristotle. Who? Aristotle. Aristotle is specially known as the founder of bi 
biology he said that life arose spontaneously so this aristotle now another philosopher who was van helmont he said that when human sweat sweat okay when human sweat i think you can see this when human sweat plus wheat bran wheat bran when kept together for 3 days led to the formation of mites so these are some of the beliefs or the thoughts which have been proposed which proves which made a theory of spontaneous emission is so, a spontaneous generation that is the theory of autogenesis or autogenesis theory where life arose from a non living organic matter a biogenetically you have to remember this keyword that is a biogenetically now we will move to the next theory that is the theory of biogenesis or biogenesis theory so the third theory is theory of biogenesis okay so that will be our third theory third theory of biogenesis now it was around the year in 1661 it was francisco reddy who first disproved the theory of spontaneous generation because he performed a experiment now what is that experiment telling about so it was francisco reddy around the year 1661 so what he did he had he cooked some fish he cooked some fish now on cooking the fish all the cells of the fish were already dead they were not alive so he cooked some fish and he placed the fish in three different beakers or three different jars suppose these are the fish flesh of the fish okay these are fish fish which he placed in three different jars this is jar a suppose this is jar b this is jar c jar or beaker you can see now he left this jar a uncovered he left it like this that is uncovered now the second jar b he covered it with a muslin cloth what he covered with a muslin cloth and the third jar he covered it with a parchment paper what paper parchment parchment paper and he kept this setup a b c jar or this setup for 3 days and after 3 days what he saw that maggots this small flies maggots came to appear from this uncovered jar suppose these are the flies these are flies which began to come out from this uncovered jar now from his experiment he concluded that this flies or the living organisms arose from the eggs the maggots arose from the eggs which were laid down by their parent cell or the parent mother eggs maggots so he suggested that whereas no maggots no maggot formation no no maggots no maggots he is observed that no maggots were found in the jar which was covered with muslin cloth and the jar which was covered with the parchment paper so he gave the idea he concluded that the flies arose from the eggs which were already laid by the parent maggots fine now this theory of biogenesis was also proved by another scientist that is spallanzini let me raise this one it was around the year of 1767 that abbe lazaro spallanzini he also performed an experiment and he proved this theory of biogenesis and disproved the theory of spontaneous generation so abbe lazaro 
स्पेलर स्पेलर जिंग If there is any spelling mistake, I'm very sorry. You can please check the spelling once. So it was around the year of seventeen hundred and sixties, sixty-seven, sixty-seven. It was around the year. Now what he did that he took a content. He took a content which consists of he prepared a nutritive broth. Nutritive broth, which were made up of vegetables. Plus meat. So this was the broth which he prepared using vegetables and meat. This is a nutritive broth. Now he poured the contents of the broth into a flask. Sorry, into a flask, and he covered the flask in such a way that that is not opened. It means sealed. It is a sealed flask. Sealed flask. So he poured the content. So this is your nutritive broth again. Now what he did? He then heated using a Bunsen burner. He heated the broth. Okay. He heated the broth, and after a few days, he saw that there is no bacterial growth. What did he saw? No bacterial growth. So he heated the broth for four hours, and after a few days, three to five, four days, he saw that there is no bacterial growth. Now, now there was another scientist who was John Needham. What he said? He said he criticized Spallanzi in his experiment, and he said that uh, actually when Spallanzi heated the broth, that was the condition of overheating, and it is not fitting the spontaneous generation. set up so now spallanzini what he did now now he broke this seal now what he did he broke the seal now what will happen if he breaks the seal now this mouth will get open now he broke the seal and now the broth is open there is no seal now what happens the air the atmospheric air came in contact with the contents of the broth that is the vegetables plus meat broth nutritive broth and then he saw after few days there was bacterial growth there was bacterial growth and hence from this experiment spallanzini what concluded that yes it is the theory of biogenesis that cells arise when the when there is already some microorganisms or some living organism present in the air coming in contact with this nutritive broth so he also disproved the theory of spontaneous generation now proving this theory of biogenesis and disproving the theory of spontaneous generation was given by another famous scientist he was louis pasteur so it was around the year of 1800s okay So it was around the year eighteen hundreds, eighteen hundred and fifties, that Louis Pasteur or Louis Pasteur he proved the theory of biogenesis. He disproved the theory of spontaneous. generation or autogenesis theory okay so it was around the year of 1800s okay i don't remember the correct date but it was about 1800s on the mid 1800s so he performed an experiment louis pasteur so what he did he took one round bottom flask let me draw sorry this is a very bad He took one round bottom flask and he filled half of the flask with yeast plus sugar solution. Okay, so he took a round bottom flask and he and he poured half filled, made it half filled with the yeast and sugar solution. Now what he did? So this flask has a long neck. Now he heated the neck, heated with a flame. Heated the neck and molded it into an S shape. S shape. So this is 
S shift or swan. Swan naked flask. Okay, so this is the setup. Now what he did? He then put heat. He heated the content. He heated the content, and as a result, what happened? Steam developed. Now the steam was flown out from the. It was flown out from the tube. As a result, the atmospheric air or the outside air. came in contact with the mouth of the flask came in contact with the mouth of the flask and went in but after some time what is saw there was no bacterial growth there was no bacterial growth so what does it suggest this suggested that when the air came in contact with the mouth of the flask the bacteria or the particles got deposited over here over the s shift and remaining the sterile air got passed into the flask sterile air means the air which is free of microorganism so here the bacteria got deposited bacteria are deposited and the sterile air was passed and hence there was no bacterial growth but after that what he did he then broke the neck of the flask now what will happen he broke the neck of the flask and now the air outside came in contact with the contents of the flask and he saw bacterial growth the contents were heated remember they were heated he saw bacterial growth now this suggested that louis pasteur he disproved the theory of spontaneous generation and he proved the theory of biogenesis now so today i am ending the lecture over here in the next video we will come with another theory that is copernican hyland theory followed with the miller and your experiment so if you all like this video please hit the like button and if you want to stay tuned please subscribe to my channel share my video and till then bye bye